Okay, good morning, everyone. How you doing? Woo! I would like to welcome everyone here to the Temple of the Living God in St. Petersburg, Florida. We're going to start things off with a great song called Unconditional Love. At this time, I would like to welcome all our virtual viewers. Thank you for being part of uh, today's Sunday service. And today we have with us Reverend Leroy Simke as our speaker on the topic, What Do I Have to Offer Life? And my spiritual reading is by Gail Allege, and it goes like this. Never think that what you have to offer is insignificant, my apologies, insignificant, there will always be someone out there who needs what you have to give, unquote. And we have music by Daniel Harris and Alex Garrido. And they're going to be singing The Way the Water Says Go. Is that what we're singing? Close enough. All right. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everyone. <laughs> yeah, right? So much pushing and pulling, so much fighting and straining, 
with so much laboring against waves and wind. I am tired, my arms are weary, my back is aching, my body's weary. I think I'm finally ready to give in. I have struggled, I have cried, I've screamed inside about the kind of life I've tried to lead. Well, right now I think it's time for the very first time to lay down my body and mind and just be. If I stop steering my boat, does it sink? Oh no, current carries it along just so. If I stop steering my life, it's gonna be all right. I'll just go where the ocean says to go. <laughs> Down the block or to the moon, around the world or just to my room. I can't say where I'm supposed to end up. I've resisted for so long as if I could do no wrong. And it's never been quite good enough. It's a funny thing, I guess, a prideful human saying yes without knowing what I'm agreeing to. But there's a simple fact I find the decision's never been mine. All I'll ever do is what I'm meant to do. If I stop steering my boat, does it sink? Oh no. Current carries it along just so. If I stop steering my life, I'm gonna be all right. I'll just go where the ocean says to go. Alex, everybody. It's a scary thing for sure to lay down my oars and quit pretending that I've ever been in charge. But it's scarier still to spend my strength and will and never even have a peaceful heart. So here goes the toughest thing, ironic don't you think, that it's so hard and so easy all at once. It's not laziness, it's just the deepest kind of trust That I'm okay when all is said and done Oh, I'm okay when all is said and done If I stop steering my boat, does it sink? Oh no, and current carries it along just so If I stop steering my life, I'm gonna be all right I'll just go where the ocean says to go. If I stop steering my boat, does it sink? Oh no, current carries it along just so. If I stop steering my life, I'm gonna be all right. I'll just go where the ocean says to go. Yes, I'll go where the ocean says to go. I'll just go where the ocean says to go. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, thank you for the beautiful music again and for your wonderful support in being here this morning. Welcome to the 1st of September, for Sunday in September, I should say. <clears throat> in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, we have some language that speaks about our life in a metaphorical sense. And some of the language goes, there is a time to be born and a time to die. There is a time to plant and pluck up that which is planted. There is a time to love 
and a time to cease from loving. There is a time to live your life fully and to continue the journey as long as you live. I want to speak today more in a philosophical sense about this question because it is really a very big question. What do I have to offer life? I think as a minister, that's one of the questions that I get over the years the most frequent in private time that people seek to have personal conversation or professional conversation. What? Do I have to offer? It's a question we all ask ourselves over and over and over again. Where do I need to go to find what it is that I'm looking for? Sometimes we think we're going to find it in a location. We have to move to a uh, new place, we have to move to North Carolina or Philadelphia or northern New York or eastern Montana or western California. Or we have to go to England or to France or to Italy or to Australia. We have to go some other place to some other part of the known world. I had a very dear friend who lived in Atlanta in the early part of her life went through a marriage, divorce, met a new man in Atlanta, and married him. And within a couple of years of the marriage, they moved to Australia, partly because his family and family business was in Australia, and his service and time with the family was needed. So they moved to live in Australia for 20-some years. And then she moved back right after her husband died in Australia. And we had a conversation by phone. She said, you know, Leroy, I've been looking for purpose in my life. And I said, well, don't you think you found it? She said, well, what do I have to offer? I saw her as a very intelligent, extremely creative, really brilliant woman. She had been involved in all kinds of professional services of the world. She was trained as, a, as an educator, as a teacher, as a counselor. She raised uh, three children and I guess maybe six grandchildren, helped to create meaningful relationships with them. And now she's at 70 years of age, and she said, what do I have to offer life? And I said, you need to look back at what you've done. That's what you've offered. And I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, not right this minute. But most of us in this congregation today, and those who are listening on social media, are at various stages of reflection about the purpose of their life, regardless of your chronological age. What do I have to offer life? I think that every skill that you've ever trained is a part of what you've offered to life. It doesn't really matter what you call it, what label it is. If you're a carpenter and you can finish carpet, do finish carpentry, that's a profound skill. I had several uncles who were Finnish carpenters. And just weeks before they passed out of the incarnation, they were still being engaged by people in their community to draw on their services. So it is not necessary that you give up a professional work if you enjoy it. And they enjoyed it, as I remember. My father was a salesman. And right up until the last month of his life, he was out there selling away and enjoying it. Oh, my goodness, he enjoyed it. He loved what he was doing. Well... Each of us has something that we do. And various 
of you in this congregation have professional work. You're still at your professional work in some way. Some of you are not. Some of you are retired. I've had a number of men and women say to me, well, what do, what do I, what have I have left? I'm retired. And it's always an interesting conversation because so many people feel that once they retire, that means their life is over. How many of you think that? Thank God, nobody's hands are up. <laughs> Thank you. You know, if you feel like you have something to do with your life, whatever that service may be, that skill may be, that capacity may be, then that's what you offer. And whether you do it full-time, part-time, occasionally, once or twice a year, doesn't really matter. It matters only that you allow yourself to see that that is something that you do. Someone said to me just this last week, well, my wife died five years ago, and I don't have anything to do anymore. There are no women out there, and I just looked at this man for a long time. I won't tell you what I thought, but um, I said, you need, I thought to myself, you need to come to my office sometime. There's a whole string of them that are waiting to meet the right man in their life, regardless of his age. Doesn't matter what his age. He needs to be able to walk and drive a car and a few other things. We'll leave that up to your imagination. You need to realize that your life isn't over until you have drawn your last breath. Now, when you and I draw our last breath, then the physical life is over. The end of the journey of the physical side of our life is over, but our spiritual life is not. I happen to believe that our life goes on, that we are eternal. Just during the service today, we invite you to sign to cards to members of families of our church who have lost loved ones. And their lives are not over. They are men and women who traverse on into the larger realm. I am a man who believes that life is eternal. Life goes on. This life is a preparation for the life to come. But that doesn't mean that you live the life that is to come. You live in this world. There are people that come to me and ask me this question. And I want you to ask yourself this question, if you think it's important. What am I going to do next time? <laughs> you may think it's an appropriate question. It's a curiosity question. It's a wonderful question. But next time isn't here. This is the time you live. You live in this world, here and now. I had a very deeply disturbing conversation, and in some ways it was disturbing because this gentleman is a man that I've known on a professional level for many, many years. He was a prominent educator out of state. His wife died when he was 75. And he lived in the community where they had lived and raised their family. He was active in everything. When his wife died, he froze up. He became frozen. Frozen. Everybody know what the word frozen means? It means iced up, iced down. There's a film put out by Disney called Frozen. animated feature if you haven't seen it. it has an interesting story to it but the idea of being frozen is that everything stops when the man or woman in your life passes away he moved to Florida and he was still frozen now you might think well where did he live you know uh, <laughs> hard to be frozen in September in Florida isn't it or August or July, whatever you think, of, whenever you think about the state. But I'm talking about internally frozen, fixed on nothing to live for. 
nothing to look toward. Nothing is good. There's no other woman. He used to say, I don't know if I will ever find another woman. And I said, you're not going to find her in your apartment. He said, well, I don't have any guests anymore. And I said, you haven't invited any. And I said, why don't you come to church? Well, I don't know anybody. I said, get acquainted. I said, nobody's going to speak to you if you sit in the chair and you look down on the floor making yourself so unavailable. I said, be here with a smile on your face. Well, I don't know that I like what I see, and I'm thinking, how do you see anything if you don't look? (laughs) You've got to be open in your heart, in your mind, to your life. And it's not just about a partner. It's not just about a wife or a husband or a new relationship in friendship, but it does include that. I think if the pandemic, which we feel like is slowing down, I at least in some larger sense, I trust this is still uh, the case, even though the CDC has released uh, its external guidelines about how to live in this time, one of the things that we've discovered is that we really need each other. We really need to be in touch with other men, other women, other children. We need to take care of ourselves health-wise, and that became very much more clear about how we practice personal hygiene and all the other health protocols that were, were revealed to us during the pandemic time. They still are good practices, as you know. And we learned that we have to be a little bit more careful about the way we engage with the men and women we love. These are called our family and our children and our friends, the people that we associate with. And we also learned that we are not on this planet alone. We are with how many hundred billion or billion people on our planet, something like seven, close to seven billion or more people. Can any of us imagine what seven billion of anything is on the planet? That's a lot of folks. And we all have a relationship to one another. What is my point? What do I have to offer life? I think we need to live with a sense of purpose in our life. A purpose in the world to be the best man and the best woman that we can be. You still have talents to offer. If you're in this ministry and you're a member or you're coming and you're going to be part of it or would like to be, you have something to bring and we have something to bring you. Be willing to offer it. Don't sit back and say, well, I wonder if. One of the ways we offer what we have to offer is by volunteering. And in the pandemic time, we found out how important it is to volunteer to the millions and millions of men and women that need support, that need help. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm not just talking about food. I'm not just talking about their personal service, but about company and reaching out and making ourselves available so we don't live in a world where we are isolated from one another. The larger piece that I want to speak to today as I bring my thoughts to a conclusion. One of the things that this life is about is being present. Being present in the world means to show up. It's like if you're invited to a party, you've got to show up. Party isn't going to happen if you don't... A party will happen, but it isn't going to happen for you if you don't show up. Now, you can call the host and say, well, I'm sorry, I can't be there. I have a heavy evening of watching television, (laughs) and I can't be there. I've got to walk around my house one more time just to make sure it's safe. I've got to go all the way around it two times to make sure there's nobody breaking in on any level, on any floor, in any part thereof. Got to check the lights, got to check the security system, got to check 
all of that. Aren't we wonderful living in this world where we have all these devices? We can plug in our phone and we can tell Siri in our home to turn on the coffee or shut the door or lock the door, turn on the lights. Isn't that exciting? I mean, what do you have to do when you come into your own house? And there's no light on. Siri didn't do her job. And Siri is listening to every conversation you have. Every single word that you are speaking aloud. Siri hears. So you want to be a little mindful of what you're saying on the phone. Or what you're saying in personal conversation when no one is listening. Siri is listening. <laughs> Siri is an electrical device that sits on your table capable of taking direction from you at great distance, 10, 20, 30, 40 feet, depending on the relationship you have to this electronic monitoring. This is the world we live in. I'm not criticizing it, but being present in our world means we're aware of who we are and what we bring. What is the gift you bring to your family? as a woman, as a man, to a brother, to a sister that you still have in your life if other members of the family are no longer on this plane. What do you bring to them? What do you bring to your children, those of you that have children? I was discussing a little bit earlier this morning with Jacob, who was on our platform today. Thank you, Jacob. And he was sharing a couple of things about his young, young adult girls going into the early stages of youthful maturity about school and special studies and Olympics and all of that kind of thing. Isn't it wonderful to be a parent and to have children that are at that age in your life? Those of you that have had children may remember that. But if their children are adult, then those children are still a part of your life. So what do you offer to your children? So many times I hear men, I hear women say to me, my children never call me. I'm never going to call them. I'm not going to leave them one damn dime. They don't call me. I'm not leaving them any money. And I said to this one lady who was going on and on about it, I just looked at her. I said, you don't have much money to leave them anyway. And I said, why don't you just call them and have some social engagement? Well, I'm not really all that interested in their life. And I'm thinking, you know, this is what we have to offer. These are substance of our substance, of our being, our DNA, our heritage, our ancestry. This is what's going on through the children. It would be good to stay in touch if we have them. And if we don't have children, then there are other children Definitely other children. This week I had a very interesting conversation with a young mother, would-be mother. Let me correct myself. She's 30 years old. She and her husband have been married six years. They have done everything that they know how to do in, except probably standing on their head to have children. The mother told me that they have already spent in medical approaches to procreate over $100,000. And she has been unable to have children. Now, I don't feel sorry for her, but I've, in a way I feel sad that that can't happen because she and her husband want children. And I said, I'm going to tell you something that I'm sure other people have told you. What about the children that are already here? Could you find it in your heart to adopt a child? And she sat in, her hand, in, in my office with her hands folded. And she said, my husband and I have talked about this. And we've talked about it. And we've talked about it, and we've talked about it, and we've talked about it. And she said, we can't agree. 
And I said, well, the children are still waiting. I said, is it necessary that they be a child from you? Out of your womb, out of your sperm, together to create a new being. Well, that's important, but I said they're still a child of God. There are so many circumstances in our life, and I don't even want to go down that road today, but it was a very moving experience for me to be with this woman who was so wrought with this idea, when am I going to have children? What do I need to do? What chemical do I need to take? What protocol do I need to practice? Do I need to do more Tai Chi, more yoga? Do I need to pray more? Do I need to meditate more? Do I need to do more good works? Is What's wrong with my life that I can't have children? I said, nothing is wrong with your life. You are still a divine child of God, even if you have been unable to have children so far. There are so many stories. I have just really dozens and dozens of stories of my professional life in which I've met with families who go through this very piece of work that I'm talking about, this very energy. My message to all of you, those of you who have children, reach out to them. And if you don't have children, then make it available in your life where you can reach out to be in service to them or to another man, to another woman who is a child of God. Remember, we are all, all children of God. That's one of the things that Jesus said in his ministry. My children, you are sons and daughters of the living God. So you are each one a son and a daughter of the living God. What do you have to do with your life? What do you have to offer with your life? I don't know the answer to that. I just know that the answer is already present in your life. And to the best of your ability, live it with joy. God bless you. And now, as I invite the activity of our congregation in our wonderful, wonderful opportunity to share. I will ask our ushers, please, to come forward. Let us pray. Infinite and divine energy, we give thanks for the profound gifting of gratitude and grace that is available to us individually in our lives. Move through our congregation with your generous spirit, blessing this gift and these gifts that they may grow and multiply in the growth and in the work that is unfolding. May all beings be blessed. Amen. God bless you and thank you up front. Let us hear from you with your beautiful music as we listen to something which is really now our theme song for the month. And thank you to all the people who are joining us online and have joined us today. Remember to send your generous gift to the ministry as you are able. Thank you. So here we go.
spirit glow. Love is light and changes the world you know. Take it with you now as you grow. Help each one to know their worth. Let your heart shine inside out and change the earth. God's in every one of us. Show you care. Change the world that we all must share. For God's love is here in us now and she loves us all the same. God's in every one of us. Praise her name. God's in every one of us. Praise Happy Sunday, everyone. Thank you.